Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. You know, I was going through my scrap and I was looking through it and I found something that I think I can turn into a really cool tool. It'll be really helpful on the shaper and I think you'll want to see what it is. So let's go in the shop and check it out. All right, guys. I own basically zero angle plates to fit this shaper or my milling machine. I had this in my scrap pile and I got to looking at it and I was like, man, that would make a, a good, you know, angle plate if it was, you know, properly machined and whatnot. So I got it out and started looking at it. And it's more than robust enough to hold, you know, the, you know, just average cutting force. And, I, you know, I decided, you know, what am I going to do with the bore there? So I found this big slug of stainless in my scrap also. And what I'm going to do is machine you know, some, or an array of bolt holes into this slug and then I'm going to machine this face and bore and foot where this slug of stainless will slide into this bore and clamp. That way I can bolt my work to the face of this and I can also index it if I want. In the future, I'll come in and I'll scribe, use my rotary table on the shaper and scribe some index lines on the back of this. That way I can accurately index this piece and I can you know rotate my work 360 degrees you know I don't know how useful that'll be but uh, and I've never seen one before but uh, that uh, that's definitely never stopped me so it doesn't hurt to have options anyway so that's the plan I'm gonna machine this true bore the face and the foot I'm gonna machine this piece to where it fits inside this bore and this top will clamp clamp it tight I'll machine some uh, an array of bolt holes in the face of this. That way I can clamp my work to it. And then I'll scribe lines with my rotary table on the shaper so I can accurately index it. That's the plan. But in order for this bracket to clamp onto this, I have to space this off a little bit before I machine it. That way I have a little room for this to squeeze and clamp. So I have to make shims. And the way that I make shims, or, you know, as long as it's, uh, yeah, I have the, you know, the accurate face to, to do this, I use the dirty finger method. Take a piece of paper, lay it on the surface that I want to replicate, rub my dirty fingers around on it, cut that out, take it over to the saw, you know, the stock or the shim, and then you get some shims. And I've already done that off camera. Made my two shims. These are 50 thousandths of an inch thick. And I'm going to put these on here. And when I bolt the top down, and I machine this guy, I can take those shims out and bolt my piece in and it'll clamp. That's the plan anyway, and that's subject to change. My order of operations, I think, are going to be machine this face, machine the bore, and then come over and do the foot with the shaper. So. I'm going to get this thing in the lathe, and I'll get you a better angle. Alright guys, I've got this piece in the fore jaw, and you're looking down on it. Well, all we need to do is true this face and true the bore. And I'm going to show you how I indicated that in and, and how I basically, you know, because this is as cast. This thing is extremely rough, and there's no real true surfaces on it. You can see the foot is extremely rough. I had to take a file and clean it up, but uh, you know, I'm just averaging everything out here. And uh, I'll show you how I indicated it in. First thing I did is I wanted to make sure that the foot was square to the movement of the carriage. So I took my, my mag base here and my indicator. zeroed it and then I move my carriage back and forth and I'm within a couple thousandths square to the movement of the carriage then I took it and rotated it and brought it in 
zero it and move across with my cross slide and I'm within ten thousandths as far as the back here square to the foot then I had to take it and try to get the bore and you're not going to be able to really see this one but But I'm within 20 thousandths of an inch, this bore parallel to this foot. So that's fine. Long as I don't have to remove an excess of material from any one face, and I can split that material between all of them, I think we'll end up with the best part. That's the plan, and that's why I kind of, you know, uh, split the difference on everything. I also had to set this part out from bottom and on the jaws, because um, when I come in with a boring bar, I would hit my vice jaws. So I just used a uh, parallel and put between here, set it up against it, and then uh, tightened it up. But this bore is also not really round because, you know, these were probably cast at, uh, you know, different. This wasn't necessarily made for this piece. You know, they probably just batched and then they stick a top on it. Uh, they're not matched by any stretch. So it's not really round, so I also had to put an indicator in here, rotate it, and, and average that out. That way I'm not lopsided on my bore. But that's the plan. So the first thing that I'm going to do is face this back. Then I'm going to come in with a boring bar. So let me get all set up for that, and I'll bring you back when we're ready. All right, guys, we're about ready. Uh, this is going to take a while, so we're just going to take it slow and get this thing done safely. <laughs> I had to switch to a peak to a carbide because uh, and it's not great carbide on interrupted cut like this because it was just chewing that uh, high-speed steel up and uh, ideally we would set this up on a big milling machine and use a shell mill and just come across it with a few swipes and be done but unfortunately that's not an option with us so we're gonna have to uh, you know face this you know uh, like this and I would really like to cover up, you know, the surfaces because I don't want this cast iron dust everywhere. But I'm kind of afraid it would get tangled up in this big piece because there's not a lot of clearance here. So I'm going to show you a little bit, bit of this and then I'll bring you back when we're almost done. And, uh, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is boring. Alright guys, we got our first pass finished, and of course we had to switch to the carbide because uh, that tool steel, man, it just burned it up in no time. And I, I, I kind of take the blame for that in a way because I took way too light of a cut, I think, and I had the cutter ground with some uh, uh, side rake and a little, uh, you know, I had it ground a little weak, uh, I'll just say that. And uh, also, I didn't take a deep enough cut to get below the roughness, you know. And this cast is tough. Everybody knows that. So we switched to carbide, and we got a really nice finish here. We just got a couple low spots that I really would like to get out of it. And I ran a dial indicator over them, and it looks like it's at least 20 thousandths deep uh, to get this out. I'm going to take 20 thousandths, and if that doesn't clean it up completely, then I'm just going to call it good. So I'm going to bring this in here and uh, get it started.
we're just going to take it slow. That's all we can do with a big interrupted cut like this. And I'll bring you back when we're done. All right, guys. I believe that we're ready to go. Uh, I've got my bar in here, which is just a homemade bar with a broken carbide end mill that I've sharpened. And we skipped the high speed seal. I haven't even tried it on this bore. It didn't work well on the back, uh, at least not for me. So I'm skipping the, the high speed steel altogether for the boring operation. So I hope this works. Uh, we're going to try it anyway. So let's get started. got it faced and we got it bored and that bore turned out real nice uh, I'm really surprised this is just a little homemade bar um, with a you know carbide uh, carbide uh, in it's actually a broken end mill it's sharper I'm uh, more than happy with that it's uh, not much chatter so I'm pleased with that I don't want to go any bigger with this bore really than I have to because um, then we just lose rigidity so not that it's probably not plenty rigid already but uh, let's take this over the bench and let's look at it yeah I mean I'm more than happy with this guys this has turned out to uh, and girls this has turned out to uh, you know pretty nice this face was extremely hard and you know this was probably just cast and then knocked out of a mold immediately and cooled f fast I'm sure something like that and uh, it had some hard spots in it, and it ate that uh, piece of the tool steel right up. But uh, once I switched to carbide, which was basically immediately, uh, we got a good finish. We did, uh, you know, two p 
passes. And it's got a few imperfections in it, but uh, you know nothing I'm real concerned about. The bore turned out real nice. The finish on the bore is not quite as nice as the finish on the back, but that bar wasn't near as rigid as that, uh, you know, and of course it was a hand ground, you know, piece of uh, broken end mill too, so. But it turned out real nice. I mean, it's more than more than sufficient for, for its purpose. And uh, here's our big block, you know. Um, this has got about 600 thousandths that we need to take off of it. And i got to come up with some sort of you know, jig to hold this because I want to machine this way back, you know, to about here. So I can't really hold it in the fore jaw to do that. So, you know, not hold this piece specifically. I'm going to have to bolt something on the back to where I can machine all the way up to this space here. And I'll have to come up with something to do that. But, uh, it's a big chunk. But then it'll go in here and, you know, we'll be able to, to index it. You know, eventually we'll come in with the shaper and, you know, uh, put some divisions on the back here. And, uh, and then we'll also, you know, have a division line here to where we can clock it if we want. And, uh, you know, it's not a real big face to bolt stuff to, but if you, you know, had a bigger piece of plate, you could bolt that plate to this and recess the, the holes and put some screw holes in it, potentially, you know, if you need to bolt anything bigger to it, but, uh, you know, for now, this is this will be just fine, but yeah, you know, uh, pretty nice, um, I really want to get the big vise off the shaper, set this up on the shaper, uh, square this face uh, with the uh, right to left movement of the table and then take an indicator and run in here and uh, check this board to make, just to make sure how parallel this bore is to the foot uh, just so we know if we have to take off any and, and if so how much um, it's hard to do something like this on the surface plate because it's round and if you move at all you know you get to, um, you know readings that are not easy to read what you can do is bring an indicator in on a surface plate and find your lowest point here and then come in on the other side and find your lowest point and uh, you know you can devise how much uh, this bore is off square to the foot by that way but uh, if we set this up in the shaper and we square this from right to left with the and then run a the ram in it, that ram should be running you know uh, straight and we should get a accurate reading with a dial indicator just to just to check but yeah I'm more than happy with that very good well guys I took the big vise off the shaper I made sure that the table was crammed in as close as I can get it and I'm, with, I'm within you know a, a few tenths or at least more like two tenths in each direction I mounted this angle that we just got off the lathe on the table and we haven't done anything to the foot of it yet. And I'm pretty surprised at the, at the results that we got and uh, I'm going to bring you in and show you close. I'm going to go a little hand here. so. This is a tense indicator, and we're getting some bounce and some glare at the back, but, uh, I mean, it just don't, you know, we're in grinder territory. You know, we're within, we're within two tenths, I'd say, you know, two or three tenths max, and, uh, you know, I indicated in this, uh, the back face across here, and, uh, got it, you know, within a couple tenths, and... You know, I just, uh, I hate to mess with that, you know. Yeah, you, as much as I'd love to bolt this thing down and, and knock this, you know, foot flat with this shaper, you know, I just don't think it's worth it. I think we could probably end up doing more, more harm than good. Let me get you back here. show you me 
cutting this foot, you know, I don't want to mess up a good thing because it'd be easy to do. And, you know, the foot's a little rough on it, but I don't know any old angle plates that ain't just standard fly cut, so I'm not too concerned about it. As long as it stays this true, I'm good with that. But I do have some shaper footage that I want to show you that was from a previous, uh, uh, some re previous recordings that I had made that just never made it to, you know, to YouTube. And uh, a quick description of what it is, is that I was going to do a shaper or a, a cutter test between like a T15 grade high speed steel and then your standard, you know, off the eBay shelf, uh, you know, cheap stuff. But uh, come to find out, it was a lot more work to burn up the cheapest cutter than I thought. So uh, it took forever and uh, it wasn't, well, it just wasn't good footage. Other than chips flying, that was all it was. So. I hope you enjoy it, and then we'll come back and send part one off. Alright guys, I had several things against me in this test, and I think the main thing was, uh, you know, just inexperience. Um, I, this is a T15 grade tool steel, and I had ground a, uh, you know, standard cheap eBay uh, tool steel to, you know, the same end radius. And uh, what I found out is uh, even the cheapest uh, tool steel can run for quite a long time. Yeah, 30 thousandths deep, 30 thousandths per stroke, about 110 surface feet per minute on the ram of the shaper. And I got a good finish and everything, you know, but, uh, you know, what I found is that the bigger the tool steel, the more heat, you know, it can absorb, or the longer it takes to get hot and break down. So, basically, this took forever, and I just didn't use the footage, but, uh, but it, you know, the surface uh, finish come out nice and the chips were nice it just uh, you know wasn't really meant for YouTube as far as this test it wasn't really an apples to apples test anyway so here it is you know the, the shaper really likes to run at this speed and this length of stroke if you notice you know the clapper is snapping shut just before it comes you know on the part and uh, you know in the past I've noticed that uh, you know if things aren't timed right the clapper will slam shut while it's still over the part and you'll get little divots in your in your surface finish and it took me a little while to find out what was causing those divots but uh, you know what it is is the clapper snapping shut and the end of the cutters banging on the work so you know that's another thing I learned. Right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well guys, hope you enjoyed what little shaper footage we had there. But, uh, you know, otherwise that stuff's just going to be deleted. So I figured, you know, you may get a little enjoyment out of it anyway. You know, I worked a whole day on that, you know, uh, outfit and then never used it. But uh, at least I feel good that, uh, you know, you got to see a little of it. But uh, I think that about does it for part one. And uh, part two, we're going to, you know, fit this guy to the bore, uh, set the rotary table up on the milling machine, put an array of bolt holes in this thing, we got to make a jig. That'll be the first thing we do. So we can hold this guy in the lathe and machine up tight on the shoulder. So there's a lot more to go. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all my old subscribers that have been with me from the beginning. And I really appreciate all my new ones. So, and for anyone who's not, please subscribe. Hit my little guy. Click on the bell up in the corner to you know, be notified of any of the new videos, because part two will be coming soon, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.